Hey everyone, welcome to Food for Thought. This is our weekly devotion where I share a, one of my recipes that I love and then also offer up a devotion from the upcoming reading. I do two of these a week, one on Monday morning at 8 a.m. that's called This is Most Certainly Brew. It's some coffee, which is the brew, and a, a devotion from Martin Luther's Small Catechism. So join us for both of these. Hopefully we'll see you there. Today I am going to make English muffins. These English muffins are no need, which is pretty great, and they come from uh, Brave Tart, which is a, re uh, a cookbook by Stella Parks. It's mostly like classic American recipes for desserts, but there's also some pretty great breakfast treats in there too, like these fantastic English muffins. These English muffins are, are really easy to put together. Uh, you just throw all the ingredients into a, a bowl and stir it up and then place uh, a cover over it and let it rise. Uh, that part takes a while though. Uh, so it's um, half a pound of uh, unbleached bread flour, uh, half an ounce of sugar, some salt, uh, just under a half, about a half teaspoon of instant yeast. This is not the regular rise yeast. This is the kind that instant that you can just mix in with the flour. And then uh, two tablespoons of butter, uh, one ounce of stone ground cornmeal, and then two, one uh, tablespoon of butter to cook with. Um, and so what you do is you put it, you mix it all up, and then you let it rise for about 12 hours. So you can do it in the morning, set it aside, and then when you're done with your day, you come back. Then it should rise for about triple the size, and then you scoop out about third cup uh, size globs without any punching it down or anything. And you set it on some parchment paper that's covered with that cornmeal. And then, uh, so it ends up looking like, well, you don't get to see the light very well. Let's try that. It ends up looking like these. So you set it up like that, cover it with cornmeal, and then put it in the refrigerator for, for about 12 hours up to 24 hours, and you let it rise in there. When you're done with that, we're going to take it over to that skillet that I've got steaming, steaming a little too hot. Um, and we're going to fry it or bake it, cook it a little bit on one side and then flip it and do a little bit on the other. Um, and then we'll, we'll move it right over to a cooling rack, which I'm going to get out now. Something necessary for every cook to have just gives just a little bit of air so that it can cool evenly without sitting on a hot pan. So we're going to set that right over here and take this and I'm going to run this right over to this stand and set it up so that you can see my griddle while I cook. So we're going to set this on here, pick it up like that, and I'm supposed to carefully tuck it out to about the size that they're supposed to be. like that. You can see they're going to be about the size of your normal English muffin. Because they're done the done this way, they're not going to be quite as round as what you expect in the store, but that's the beauty of homemade, right? We're going to leave it like that and let that go. It's supposed to go for about eight and a half minutes. And while that does its thing, Let's take a look at our devotion. So, our reading is from Isaiah chapter 55, and this is a famous one. It says, For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I send it. 
God's word always does what it's supposed to. That's what Isaiah is saying. What, what God is saying in this passage from Isaiah is that when God speaks, things always happen. And we can see that in the number of ways that God speaks into the world and makes creation react. The, the classic, most important example comes from Genesis, where God said, let there be light, and all of the sudden, there was light. And God created everything in the whole world simply by speaking with his voice. Another time we can see that is from the New Testament when Jesus does so many of the miracles that he does simply by speaking to people. There was a, a dead girl in a, in a house with her parents weeping, and she says, little girl, I say to you, get up. Or when they're out on the, on the boat in the middle of the storm, and it's raging all around them, and the disciples are terrified, and Jesus gets up and says, quiet, be still. And all of creation listens and obeys his voice. God's voice, God's word, always works. In the church, we see this every time we, we gather together to hear God's word, that when God speaks to you, it works. I think the most wonderful example for us is that when God speaks to you, the words, I forgive your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we know that because God promises that it does what it's supposed to do, that you have forgiveness. Now, one of the challenges about God's word is that it doesn't always do what we want it to do. Now, when we receive our forgiveness of sins, it works. God promises that. He says that when when the church forgives your sins, they are forgiven. It's a promise from Jesus. But sometimes, the, when we speak the word of God to the world, it doesn't always do what we want it to do. See, we would love it if when we told people that Jesus loves you, and he calls you to a new life, everyone would say, Ah, yes! I would love that! Let's do it! And our churches would be full, Everyone would believe in Jesus, and it would be pretty great. But sometimes, God's word is designed to offend people, to upset them. Because when we tell them that their life isn't what God has called them to be, people get angry. We can see this when Moses came to Pharaoh. He said, God says, let my people go, and hardened. Pharaoh's heart. We can see this when Jesus spoke to the crowds after he fed that 5,000. And he said, my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. And the people said, this is crazy. And they left. But that's when Jesus turned to his disciples and said, will you go too? And Peter responds, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. So what we trust is that God's word is active and it does things. Always does what God wants it to do. And that's the key. God uses his word to accomplish what he wants. Our job isn't to find the best ways to make it do what we want. Our job is to be faithful with God's word, and then simply do it. We let God take care of the rest. And that's one of the biggest challenges of being Christians, is we want to control what it does, but we can't. We just trust that God will do what he wants. Okay, um, it looks like we might be about that time. Oh, they are looking beautiful over here. You can see them right there. Let's get you a little closer. They are poofing up gorgeously. So I am going to take this and flip them over in the butter, boop, like that. Maybe I 
There, some of these are looking uh, a little less crispy than others. <laughs> you can see that uh, there's a hot spot on there. Some are a little darker than others, but they're still looking pretty great. Um, these are gonna take about three minutes to get done. Uh, and so while that's happening, I wanna talk to you a little bit about using yeast and making bread. Um, you, if you haven't done it before, are probably scared. Like, using yeast, it sounds like it's pretty challenging. I know lots of people who think, oh, this is a long process, this, this is so much hard work, you have to make sure it's right, and you know, it can fail, and all of that. It's really not that hard. Sure, if you're making really complicated bread recipes, it can be tough. I have a recipe for cinnamon uh, raisin bread that involves mixing and heating, and then you, you roll it out, and then you sprinkle the mix on it, and then you put the things in, and then you roll it up, and then there's another thing, and you have to take the temperature of the bread before it's done, and it's relatively complicated. But this thing, easy. Throw the ingredients in a bucket, mix it up, put a, a lid on it or cover it with plastic wrap, and then you just let it go. And cooking is just as easy as you saw. You just sort of set it on there, let it heat for eight minutes, flip it, and let it heat for three minutes. And then you're going to have amazing homemade English muffins. You didn't have to knead it, you didn't have to form it, you didn't have to do any of that hard work. Just let it have time. And I've smelled these. They're going to be great because the longer you let something rise, the better it tastes. You get all that extra yeast goodness. So you should try it out, this recipe. Uh, search for No Need English Muffins by Stella Parks. You'll probably be able to find it online. She shared a lot of these same recipes. Uh, and I encourage you, if you love American desserts, cakes, pies, that sort of things, uh, there's also a fantastic recipe for Oreos. Wow! Way better than the name brand. Well, I'm going to go see if those are done. We can see if you'll see the finished result there. Okay, here we go. Flip. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Flip. Uh, let's take one last look. There they go. And we're going to take this over to our cooling rack. Yum. Hey, and so that is the end. Uh, it's great to see you today for Food for Thought. Um, join us again on Monday morning for uh, This is Most Certainly Brew. And then on Wednesday again, Food for Thought. That will be, next week is the last week I'll be doing these things. I'm going on a sabbatical. It starts July 19th, and then my last uh, day of sabbatical is August 23rd. Uh, that's a Sunday. So on the 24th, I will start with This Is Most Certainly Brew and continue on with the normal devotion schedule. Um, so uh, until then, uh, Pastor Jacob Corzine is going to be doing pastoral care with the congregation. Um, and so if you're looking for that while I'm gone, please go to him. Great to see you today. Have a good day. Bye.